How does the moon still have so many mysteries? We beat you, moon. Give up your secrets. Don't make us send Buzz back up there. Hello, moon men and women. Julian here for DNews. The moon is our little celestial sidekick, the Robin to Earth's Batman. And ever since we've noticed it up there, we've come up with all sorts of myths and theories of how it got there. For the last 40 years, we've had an explanation we were mostly satisfied with. But now, a new study published in the journal Nature Geoscience has revived the discussion of the moon's origin. The study suggests that the moon was formed a little bit at a time as small planetoids hit a young proto-Earth over and over four billion years ago. Back then, the solar system was still just getting together and sorting itself out, so collisions of these forming space chunks were a lot more common. Each time one hit, it would kick up a cloud of debris that would settle into a ring of dust around our forming planet. Eventually, the orbiting dust would coalesce and a little ball of moon chunk would move away from our planet over the course of centuries. Then another planetoid would hit the Earth and the whole process would repeat itself. The moon bits would interact in space, sometimes causing them to be ejected or collide with Earth again, and occasionally they'd come together and form something greater, like an orbiting moon fragment megazord. The study is similar to the current most popular explanation for the moon called the giant impact hypothesis. I think you can see where they're different though. Instead of a lot of smaller impacts over a long period of time, the giant impact hypothesis does all its moon forming in one go. Baby Earth was smacked by another Mars-sized object called Theia, made a huge debris cloud, and then that cloud reformed into the moon we see today. The giant impact hypothesis has been the favorite since it was proposed in the 70s, but it's not perfect. The biggest issue is the composition of the moon and Earth are really similar, which isn't what you'd expect if two large objects smack into each other. We think that when the planets formed, their composition depended a lot on how far they were from the sun. The farther away they were, the more likely they were to retain heavier isotopes of elements. So Earth and Mars have different levels of certain isotopes, like silicon. But somehow, Earth and our moon have surprisingly similar levels of silicon, oxygen, and titanium. To explain the similarities, Theia would either have to have formed roughly the same distance from the Sun as the Earth, or when it hit the Earth, it would have to have been spinning in just the right way to kick up more Earth material so the Moon's composition matches ours. It's not out of the question, but it certainly seems unlikely. Previous models of single giant impacts showed a moon like ours forming only 1-2% to of the time. This is what led the researchers to model what might happen if the Earth was occasionally bombarded with smaller planetesimals instead of big old Theia. They found that if the moon is built up over time, the composition of the impactors can be different from the Earth's, but the debris will average out and mask what the original planetesimals were made of. When the researchers simulated the scenario 800 times, they found that there was better than a 10% chance of getting the moon we see today. Not great, but better. Of course, they say their model raises other issues, like how these smaller impacts could give our Earth and the moon the angular momentum we see today. But for that, their proposal needs more study. It does raise the possibility that we once had multiple smaller moons though, or as I call them, moon moons. While we only have the one moon now, other planets in our solar system have them in the double digits. Why did we get stuck with just one? Well, Trace talks about that here. So which sounds better to you, giant impact hypothesis or assembling the moon IKEA style? Let us know in the comments, subscribe for more, and we'll see you next time on D News. By the way, it's my birthday.